Today I'm teaching you how to make a basic tea-based mead. So let's get started. So today we're taking grocery store tea that we found and turning it into mead. It's a pretty easy process and I'm gonna walk you through kinda on a beginner to intermediate level how to do this. It's pretty quick. So I'm first gonna show you the recipe card. And you'll notice that this is using orange and cinnamon tea. You don't have to use that specific tea. You can use whatever one you find anywhere in the world. The recipe card, just sub out whatever one you buy and then keep the rest of it, generally speaking. And we'll talk about the other things on there, including the kinds of honey you can use and the stabilizing thing in there, or pasteurizing, stuff like that. I've made a lot of mead in my time, but I haven't used a lot of tea as the base. Most people say that tea provides a lot of tannin because it has a lot more mouthfeel, and it's something that people use, generally speaking, to add the tannin or mouthfeel to their meads. So what happens when we use a entirely tea-based mead instead of just a little bit? Well, I'm gonna share that with you today because we're first gonna start by getting a bunch of tea and specifically, again, orange and cinnamon for this one. I found 20 tea bags, which you don't have to use that much. You can dial back the amount if you want less strong, but I wanted a very strong tea experience here. 20 tea bags kind of bundled up and tied together in 1.25 gallons of water. Now, most of you might have a um, you know, one gallon jug. You might have one of these from a kit you bought. This is a one gallon jug. Now you can do this mead in here. You will just need to adjust the ratio a little bit. So I'll put up a secondary card for a specific one gallon recipe but the one I'm using today used a little bit more. I suggest using a vessel that's larger because at the end of this mead, we wanna fill up this container and you will lose some of the volume to sediment, which is dead yeast, floaties, stuff like that that lands at the bottom. You naturally lose a little bit of mead, but here's the regular card for a one gallon total volume process. You could have this or Let's say you have a bucket or a larger fermentation vessel. This is a two gallon bucket. I used a larger vessel that was actually a, a big carboy. Ultimately, I was able to rack into a one gallon carboy and have enough room because I started with more volume. So just wanna specify that. Why you might see the volume being 1.25 gallons of water instead of a lower amount. So we started with 1.25 gallons of water in a big old pot. We added our 20 tea bags and we ended up steeping those tea bags for, I gotta get my notes. We got our water to 195 degrees Fahrenheit and we steeped all 20 of those tea bags for about five minutes. Now, if you're a tea person, don't yell at me because I'm still learning about tea in general. So that's how long we steeped it for. It extracted a lot of those flavors. If you're making a different sort of tea, look at the box you got or look online to figure out how warm or hot to get your water to and how long to steep it. Those are two important factors because every tea is different, so you don't wanna go too far with some. Just look up what your steeping time and your steeping temp needs to be. After we had done that with our tea, we pulled the bags out. We went ahead and added our honey at this point. On the recipe card, you see, specifically I used a tropical blossom honey. That's just what I used. You can use any sort of honey you want. It could be a, you know, really dark malty kind of honey, something like a buckwheat, but I really wouldn't recommend that. I recommend a lighter honey, like a clover, orange blossom, uh, maybe wildflower, some sort of honey like that, because that will generally maybe pair better, but it also depends on the kind of tea you're using. Lots of variables. We used a tropical blossom honey that I, I had. It was a citrus mix honey that I thought would go well with obviously orange and cinnamon. We ended up putting over three pounds, roughly about three pounds and 12 ounces into the 1.25 gallons of water that we had. So we raised our volume some more. It's roughly at this point about a one and a half gallon mead. We then took 
and let it cool because we didn't want to move it into a new container just yet. We let it cool down to very close to room temp. It was about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I then racked it into a new container, which I used a three gallon carboy. I went over the one gallon. Again, there's a recipe card earlier for exact one gallon recipe if you want that. Before we poured all of that into this vessel, we took a gravity reading, which means we took a hydrometer, which is this floating measurement device that you put in a tube or some sort of container where it will float with our starting liquid. This helps us figure out how alcoholic this brew is going to be based off of looking at the number that it starts with and looking at the final number that it ends at. So this started at 1.081 starting gravity or original gravity. We wrote that down because we're going to use the number here in a few minutes to figure out how alcoholic this brew is. Once we had dumped our whole orange and cinnamon and honey mixture into the, the container, we added the Red Star Premier Cuvee, which is a great wine yeast that I like. It's a quick fermenter, doesn't need a ton of nutrition, it's a good, good yeast overall and I had some leftover. So we used it, we dumped it into the container, shook it up as best we could, and um, it was time to let this thing start fermenting. We are going to add some yeast nutrition, which is specifically Fermate O in this circumstance. We're gonna add it at the 24 hour mark. So what I did was at 24 hours, I didn't take a video of this, I should have, and I'm sorry, but imagine with me, I opened that container up, it had been fermenting, There's, there was bubbling coming from it, you could tell that there was fermentation. And I, because I was using a large vessel, I went ahead and just added my four grams of Fermate O straight into the mead. It started to foam up some, but because the container was really large, it didn't cause an issue. If you're using my one gallon recipe that we talked about, you're gonna wanna take a little bit of mead out of this vessel, then add the nutrients into the, the extra that you just poured it into, let that foam up some, and then slowly pour this back in. Because you're gonna be close to this layer here with your fill line, and the yeast get excited when they find food at the 24 hour mark, and they'll foam up. So pour some of that mead out, add your nutrients into there, and slowly pour it back in. We fed our yeast at the 24 hour mark, and let them continue to ferment. About three weeks in, this was done fermenting, and I noticed it was done because the yeast had fallen to the bottom, it had somewhat cleared up, and I could see that the bubbling had slowed down greatly. If you're watching an airlock specifically, you'll notice the bubbling slow down, but that's not a total indicator of all fermentation. So we wanted to be sure of this, we took a gravity reading, which means we took our hydrometer again, and we floated it in the tube with a sample of our mead, and we found that the new number was 1.000. So contrasting these two numbers, 1.081 to start and 1.000 after the fermentation, we plugged them into a calculator or used this equation and found that this was roughly about a 10.5, three or four percent mead. Now, this is done fermenting for us. There's no way it's gonna ferment anymore, which is good for us. We moved it into a new container with an auto siphon and tubing. And again, it was another, uh, actually we moved it into a, a one gallon carboy. I did have some leftover mead because I started with a greater volume. So I did have to ditch a little bit of mead there. You don't necessarily have to if you have a larger container. After we had moved it into a new container, we stabilized it. Now you have two options here. We want this mead to be sweeter, so we need to make sure no further fermentation can occur. So we're going to either stabilize it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite in conjunction, which I'll tell you ratios in a second, or you can take and pasteurize it. So pasteurizing is the process of heating the liquid up to a certain temp for a certain amount of time. When you do that, the yeast kind of die off. Any possible yeast in there just go kaput and then you can safely back sweeten, or you can use the potassium metabisulfite and potassium sorbate. I use a half teaspoon of, of sorbate per gallon and the uh, point, it's 0.6 grams of metabisulfite per gallon as well. There's a great calculator you can use and I'll put it down below that will tell you how much of each one to use if you're doing a different size batch, but those are generally the amounts that I use per gallon. 
Either way, we are wanting to back sweeten this, so we go either direction, we stabilize or pasteurize, and we're now able to back sweeten this mead. I back sweetened this with eight, what was it? Yeah, eight ounces of uh, more honey, which brought our new gravity reading. We're gonna take a third gravity reading. That gravity reading was 1.020 for the final gravity. When we mixed in the honey, we poured part of the mead out into a new container. We added our honey in, and then we stirred it up, and then we put the other mead back in. So our volume displacement was kind of all over the place, but it ended up working out just fine. Took that gravity reading, and we let this thing set for another two or three weeks. And this was to ensure two things, that there would be no more fermentation. We watched to see if there's any fermentation occurring, if the yeast would get excited again and decide to do anything with the new honey. And we also wanted it to clear up. So this naturally cleared up pretty well over the course of about two weeks. At that point, it was clear, we bottled it. So I took my auto siphon, my tubing, a bottling wand, we raised the mead up, we took some bottles, we sanitized them, and then we moved them into each one, corked and capped them, and put a label on it, and we have ourselves a mead, an orange and cinnamon mead. Now supplement out whatever words I just said for whatever tea you're using, and you've got yourself a mead as well. Here's a timeline of what I just told you. Feel free to screenshot this alongside the recipe because this will hopefully give you the idea of what you're doing, but this process should be simple for you. I hope it is, at least. I've done a lot of talking. Let me clear the, uh, the table here and then let's taste this thing. I just got this drinking horn glass, so I figured it's time to use it. Check out this mead, this thing looks wonderful. There is, I mean, it's pretty dang clear. It's not the clearest mead. Again, we didn't, we let it kind of clear with time. Not the end of the world, but I love the look of it. And let's go and taste it. Well, smelling it first, What's so cool about this whole tea thing, and I feel dumb saying this because one, I've not really been a big tea drinker in my life. I know some people are gonna be like, well, I already knew this, but it's pretty dang true to like what the flavors you're getting. There's like a, a presence of obviously honey. This is a mead that's been back sweetened, but more specifically orange, which that, that citrusy bright vibe apparent on the nose. And then the cinnamon's like light. It's not super cinnamony as I've tried many heavy cinnamon things before. Definitely a very herbally sort of mead. Here we go. Ooh, yeah. This mead at the point of tasting, it's about two and a half months old. Very, very bright, obviously, orange and bright honey, tropical honey. I mean, it's very clean. There's no bright alcohol presence. Even with this being a 10 and a half ish percent brew, you would think there'd be some alcohol presence, but it's not huge. The sweetness level is nice, just enough to continue to pronounce honey, which is what we want. The orange character is supported through the honey. The cinnamon is the only thing that lacks here. And I would say it's, it is present, but it's not extremely present. It's not like the, the bold cinnamon flavor that I've had before. So if I were doing this specific one, mead with the cinnamon again, I might throw a cinnamon stick in just to give it more umph, just to give it more of that, that uh, strong cinnamon character that I want. But overall, this thing is really good. And what I love about this, and I love about this recipe in general, is you could sub out any of the teas that you find. You could literally walk in the grocery store right now, go to the tea aisle, blindly grab a box and supplement out the tea for the, my recipe card, and you could find yourself with a pretty dang good tea mead. So I encourage you to try that. Try to make a tea mead. And, you know, I'll probably, I, I use tropical honey here. I'm probably gonna go ahead and just change my recipe card to say clover or light, or I'll just put honey, because again, it all depends on what you're making. Some teas will support, or best be supported by heavy honeys that are like malty, buckwheat, avocado blossom, mesquite, whatever you're making. Some teas, like an orange and cinnamon, 
might need something lighter, a clover, a wildflower, an orange blossom. So just think about that as you're planning your recipe. But there's that card again. I hope that you'll go and experiment with this. There's also the timeline that you'll see on the screen as well. I hope that between both of these, you will get enough information to be able to try this. And I have a fun video with my good friend, uh, Mandy from Faywood Mead. She is going to help me, or she is doing this tasting with me, with four other tea meads I've made from somebody who'd sent me some tea a while back. So um, you can go check that out if it's out. I'll try and link it below. Let me know what you think. I hope I've walked you through the process at a beginner intermediate level. This is a pretty easy mead to make, a very good starter recipe for anyone who wants to get started. If you have questions, um, comment below. I'll gladly answer them. And of course, hit subscribe. We are in, well, we are on, I should say, the road to 75,000 YouTube subscribers. It's just a number, but it's a goal, a goal for us to reach. And I hope that you will hit subscribe, join us, and I will see you in the future with another video. I gotta get my mead, because Cheers.